Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Money with the Certified Financial Group right here on News 96.5 WDBO's Ask the Experts Weekend. We are here with the Oracle of Orlando, Joe Burke, alongside Nancy Head, Certified Planning Professionals at the Certified Financial Group. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kyle. How are you guys today? Doing great. How are you? All right. All right. All Good. right. Well, what else can the audience call you about today? You can call us about anything that's on our mind regarding their personal finances or even other stuff. You know, this is a full, wide-open show. We can deal with most everything. But we specialize in financial questions. So for those listeners that may be new to the program, Nancy and I are here to answer questions that might be on your mind regarding your personal finances. As we say, we go through life, trying some of this, trying some of that, wake up at 55 years old and find out what we may have is a collection of financial accidents. So Nancy and I and the 10 other certified financial planner professionals at CFG, what we do is we do financial planning and wealth management for a fee. All the work we do for our clients in those areas is on a fee basis, and we are happy to take your questions on Saturday morning absolutely for free. So if you have any questions on things that you're trying to decide on regarding your IRA or 401k or long-term health care or annuities or life insurance or reverse mortgages and all that and more, Nancy and I are here to take your calls. As I say, we are the only financial call-in show in Central Florida that's hosted exclusively by certified financial planner professionals. This is not a one-hour infomercial to tell you what we do and how we do it. We are here to help you. So once again, we are here to fix those dents and bruises that you might have incurred over your life in making some maybe unwise financial decisions, and we're here with the Bondo to patch you up. So give us a call. The numbers are... 844 220 Zero nine six five eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. I am turning on the text machine at two one two three two. You can also get us there. We just ask you to keep it about one hundred and sixty characters because that's all we can see on our screen. Again, the text is two one two three two. Well, Nancy, apparently you have a very busy summer for you. Three tips for a happy financial marriage you have today because you're doing some traveling. Yeah, we have a, a lot of weddings to go to. Uh, the, over the next three or four months. It's just, it's crazy. It's wonderful, but it's also crazy. But, you know, for many couples, as the years go on, if they don't lay down some ground rules in the beginning, money could really rip apart the marriages, and we just don't want that to happen. So here's uh, just a few tips. The first one is decide together what you want. Talk about your financial priorities. What are your hopes? What are your dreams? Establish goals early Make short-term, long-term goals, and list the steps that you need. Writing stuff down can really be very powerful. You know, it, you have to look at what your decisions are. The next one, often the toughest, is balance the financial power in your relationship. Discuss the different roles that you're going to play. You know, who are you going to be both employed? Is somebody going to be employed at one point and not another, depending on what your family dynamics are? Who's going to be managing? How are you going to be spending? Uh, like my husband and I have a certain amount of money that you could spend without any discussion or question. And, you know, early in a relationship, that might be less than it would be, you know, where we are, you know, 30 plus years into marriage. But talking about these things in a very unemotional manner are very um, important as well as divvying up the financial responsibilities, who's going to pay what bills and make the deposits into what different investment accounts, so on and so forth. And then importantly, accept your own imperfections and your partners too. Don't try and, uh, you know, rewrite the past and don't try and beat somebody up over how they've lived their financial life in the past. You're creating a new future together. You can write your own rules. And as long as you're walking down the same path and you discuss and review these things regularly, financial issues should not be a thorn in the side of your marriage. And what you want to have before you even get to that point is have a clear discussion as to what your current financial situation is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want to be sure that somebody isn't bringing a boatload of problems to the marriage. And uh, let's be honest with it up front. If you have an issue, if there's problems, stuff that needs to be corrected or work on, the last thing you want to do is say, I do, and then <laughs> regret saying I do six months later because you found out all kind of stuff about your new spouse. So be honest up front. Honesty is a good part of, of a marriage, particularly when it comes to finances, because as Nancy said, uh, if you're not on a solid financial footing, m money oftentimes is what destroys a marriage because of disagreements, because they haven't laid out the things that Nancy has said. So good rules for the road. And uh, this is June coming up. So, a lot of, so when are the weddings? Um, next month, we have one. In June, we have two. In July, we have another one. Uh -huh. There you go. We'll so. keep it busy. <laughs> 
the the honeymoon is not the best time to find out about your spouse's twenty thousand dollar credit card debt. No, not really. Or student loan debt. Yeah. Or student loan debt. You yes. know, if you start off like we did with like less than nothing, <laughs> it's easy to just start putting mm-hmm. some plans in place. Well, less than nothing is uh, relative compared to people who have twenty thousand dollars less well, than I nothing. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I married student loans. Student loans. What yep. can I say? It wasn't, uh, wasn't so bad, but... You can't start uh, turning around and saving for college if you're still paying it off. Well, that's uh, true. That's, that's a very question. true. But these are the kinds of questions that we uh, oftentimes, and not oftentimes, but every time face when we do financial planning for clients. We sit down across the table from them, and oftentimes stuff comes up that uh, maybe one spouse wasn't aware of. Right, Nancy? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, most definitely. And then, you know, family dynamics, there's a lot of... of People and I haven't seen it in a while, but I used to see it frequently that they were doing their financial planning based on what they assumed they were going to inherit. Oh. So yes. Oh, that's yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, and we don't have to worry about this, honey, because my mom's mm-hmm. going to leave us. You know, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. When and, is she going to leave us? Yeah, well, first of all, the when, and you know, will it really happen? So that that's one of the worst. Uh, couples fin- financial planning that I've seen. And like I said, thank God I haven't seen that in a while. So Yeah, no, uh, it goes through probate and it's significantly less. Yeah. Than, or, uh, yeah. or it's consumed for long-term health care that nobody planned on. Yes. Or yes. the parent changed who the beneficiaries were mm. before they passed away. Or yep. the parent got remarried. You mean all these things so happen? All, <laughs> yes, it's real oh, life. They it, can. It, it they can. can. It does so. have a tendency to mess things up, so... But, I mean, if you have things in place, like my daughter and son-in-law right now are trying to buy a house. Um, and it's very different from when we bought our first house 30 years ago. But, you know, because they have me as a mom, they had their ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're going in pre-qualified. So they really could, if they didn't get outbid on 20 million houses, find something. You know, and be able to say yes when they find the house that they want because they check their credit. You know, they were uh, good about their saving and their spending and having documents together and having money for a down payment. So, yeah. You know, and it was all because they, you know, worked together and with us. And yeah. slow planning, it takes out so many headaches. Yeah. Got to have your ducks lined up. That's yep. right. Well, 844-220-0965 is the number if you uh, want to put your ducks in a row, as they say. 844-220-0965. That's the uh, number to call here on the radio station today. 21232 is the text line. Again, 21232. We usually have some text questions, and we usually get to them at the end of the show. Uh, we do. Uh, I've got a question here uh, that's... Uh, pretty much what we were just talking about. When my wife and I both die, does our daughter get our retirement accounts tax-free? Well, gosh, that would really be nice, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, she would initially get the money tax-free. However, uh, for a non-spousal beneficiary, uh, you have to start taking required minimum distributions right away. Now, if the person who passed away was over 70 and a half and had taken a required minimum distribution in the year they pass, then the non-spousal beneficiary can wait to the following year. But it's based on their life expectancy, um, if you want to stretch it out as long as possible, and whatever you know is withdrawn is taxed, and then the bulk of the assets that are still sitting there in that IRA, which becomes an inherited IRA, will accumulate on a tax deferred basis. It's what we call a stretch IRA, and the key there is is that the old, the current custodian of mom and dad's IRA need to convert it, as Nancy said, to what's called a beneficiary IRA before it's moved. And what you don't want to do, and we see this periodically with people trying to do this on their own. They say, well, I have 60 days to roll this over. I'll just cash the thing out and I'll just move it to my IRA. And you just blew the whole deal. So it's got got to be converted to a beneficiary IRA at the current custodian and then moved to your beneficiary IRA at your new custodian. And then, as Nancy said, you do what's called required minimum distributions based on your life expectancy. There There is a proposal in Congress right now to eliminate the stretch IRA for non spouse beneficiaries. And we hope this doesn't happen. But the recommendation is, as the current as the current proposal is written, is to have that account drained within five years, like it is with annuities. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And of course, if it happens, our listeners will be some of the first to know. And we are opposed to that vehemently. 
Well, the five-year mm. option was the original option, was it not? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you had to take it all either in a lump sum or you could spread it out as long as five years and that was it. So what, what that, of course, what that'll happen is that folks will drain those accounts, the money will be gone, and then you just messed up perhaps the retirement for the survivor beneficiaries because they had to cash the thing out and they spent it on the vacations and the weddings and the new TV. That's what happens. Yeah, n- nobody gets that uh, benefit and go, oh, okay, let me just put it away for my retirement. Oh, good, we can pay off everything and finally go to Europe. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Sadly. So it's it's kind of like winning the lottery, and it's not you know you, it's self control and understanding what you can do, and then what of course if you got to cash it out, you have to pay taxes. Well, true, and yeah, that's yeah. where financial planning comes into play because mm-hmm. not only can we look at the cash flow now and through retirement, but under current tax law, we can look at what the tax ramifications are of taking the withdrawals at different rates. And at different times. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So exactly. That's yeah. why you guys need to give everybody a call here at the Certified Financial Group, 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Text to 21232. And not only are they on the radio this morning, every Saturday, as they always are at 9 a.m., they also help a lot of people in Central Florida through their workshops. And yes. I believe we've got an upcoming workshop schedule at the offices at Certified Financial Group at 1111 Douglas Avenue. Yes. Yes, the, the next workshop is next weekend, Saturday, April 13th. All of the workshops are from 9 to 11 a.m. at our offices on Douglas Avenue and hosted by Gary Abley. Uh, on the 13th, it's Countdown to Retirement. And then Saturday, May 18th, Everything You Want to Know About Mutual Funds. Saturday. Now, now Countdown to Retirement is targeted to who? Uh, to people that I would say are five years or less away from retirement. Five years or less. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then the next one would be targeted to who? Uh, everything you want to know about mutual funds. Mm-hmm. Various different age brackets. You know, anybody who really wants to learn what is a mutual fund, what's an open-end fund, a closed-end fund, an exchange-traded fund. I mean, it's always great just to get some knowledge. Just to know what it is. Yes. So anybody in their 25, 35, 45, or 95. Right. Gotcha. If you're participating in any type of plan through work or something, you're depositing into mutual funds, and it would be nice to sort of know exactly know where what your money's is. going. Yep. yep, yep. On Saturday, June twenty second, healthcare options in retirement, mm. and um, what he's discussing there is the various iterations of Medicare, Medicaid, all the various different options. The the supplements go through what letter H now? Right. Yeah. Oh, Medicare Part H? Yes. Woo. So it's crazy. I have no idea what any of them are. But Gary does, and he has people there that will help also explain. It's going to be Part um, Z by the time I get to 70. <laughs> Saturday, August 24th, Financial Basics, Key Elements to a Successful Financial Plan. Now, that sounds like it's open to anybody that wants to right. learn. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and the stuff that we had discussed already and what people ask about why financial planning is so important and the various different answers we may potentially be able to answer, you know, questions we may be able to answer for you through financial planning. Yeah, so even if you uh, just don't know anything and want to just begin at the basics. Right. That's the workshop for you. Exactly. And last on the schedule so far is Saturday, September 14th. Will your savings last a lifetime? Mm. A lot of people are very concerned about cash flow and will I run out of money before I run out of life? And, and he'll go through the steps that we take with our clients to answer that question. If anybody wants to make a reservation, please go to our website, which is financialgroup.com. There's a drop down for the workshops. They do tend to fill up fast. So if any of these interest you or maybe I spoke a little bit too fast for you to figure out which one you want to attend, please go to our website, financialgroup.com. All of these are absolutely free. They're held in our classroom there at Certified Financial Group. We can accommodate 25 to 30 people comfortably so we don't cram you in some small conference room. Gary will provide some refreshments. And once again, leave your checkbook at home. The objective behind this is to give you information to keep you from becoming a financial tragedy in your retirement years and to give you some education that you can use and to also tell you what we do as certified financial planner professionals, how we work with our clients. This way, whether you need financial planning now or sometime in the future, you'll give us an opportunity to earn your business. So once again, as Nancy said, go to our website. That's financialgroup.com, financialgroup.com. Click on events. And while we're on events, we've got coming up on May the 4th, 
Well, we'll talk about that right after we get the three after big the break. things. All right, yeah. let's do it. Eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. That is eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. We will continue to plan tomorrow today right here on News ninety six point five WDBO. Now. This is On the Money with the Certified Financial Group right here on News 96.5 WDBO. It's all part of our Ask the Experts weekend. We are here with York of Orlando, Joe Burke, alongside Nancy Heck. They are certified planner professionals at the Certified Financial Group, taking your phone calls at 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Joe, why are we listening to MFSB? Because on uh, May the 4th, Certified Financial Group, once again, as a, for the eighth consecutive year, will be the proud sponsor of the annual Springs Concert held in the Springs community in Longwood under the stars around the Springs, uh, what do you call it? Around the Springs, I guess. It's an opportunity for you to come out and hear some great music. Uh, this year, it's a tribute band bringing back music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, kind of soul music, music of... Uh, Tell me who their executive director. Oh, this is MFSB. Yes, of course. Uh, we'll get Marvin yes. Gaye coming Marvin up. Marvin Gaye. Yeah. We've got uh, the Smokey news. Robinson, The Miracles, uh, Stevie, Stevie Wonder, Wonder maybe the little Michael Jackson, Temptation. The Commodores, I think I yeah, saw Yeah, it's going to be great. So uh, it's, it's a great tribute band. Comes in, does the music backed up by the full complement of the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra. And it's on May the 4th, uh, Saturday evening, of course. And bring your blanket, bring your adult beverage, kick back under the stars. And uh, we'll hope to see you there. Go to our website, financialgroup.com, financialgroup.com. Click on events, and uh, it'll take you right to getting some tickets. And the tickets are going fast because it's always a sellout. So if you've been always thinking goes about, by fast. So if you've been thinking about gump coming, this is the time to do it. Don't hesitate. Go to financialgroup.com, click on events, and uh, get your tickets. All right, just like that. And uh, we've got a minute away from latest news, weather, and traffic, so we want to give out the phone numbers and the text line one more time. Got a couple of text questions here, but the phone lines have been empty today. I don't know if everybody's just sleeping in. 844-220-0965 is the number to do that. 844-220-0965. We will continue on with the conversation with Joe Burton, and Nancy Heck, and uh, plenty of time to get your question answered. we got going all the way up to 10 o'clock. And uh, well, time for the latest news, weather, and traffic right here on News 96.5 WDBO. Financial Group right here on News 96.5 WDBO's Ask the Experts Weekend. We are taking your phone calls at 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965 with Joe Burt and Nancy Heck from the Certified Financial Group. Joe, what can they call you about today? Well, once again, Nancy and I are here to answer questions that might be on your mind regarding your personal finances. You always wondered how this works, how that works. You hear something from your neighbor, from your co-worker, from your brother-in-law, and is he right? Is he really right about that? Or I heard this and I heard that. And we kind of go through life making decisions based on sometime inaccurate information. You mean my best friend could be wrong? It is possible. It my is neighbor possible. could it be wrong? Po- brother-in-laws are never right. It is. Oh, brother-in-laws are never, never right. Possible. So Nancy and I are here to clear up those Rule questions that might be on your mind. Uh, and Nancy and I and the other certified financial planner professionals at CFG do financial planning and investment management for a fee on Monday through Friday. But on Saturday morning, we are here free to answer the questions that you might have about your mutual funds, about your IRAs, about 401ks, about required minimum distributions that might be coming up for you, when to take them, how to take them, about reverse mortgages, questions about life insurance, what kind of buying, what, when should you do hold it, who needs it, about annuities, the goods, the, the bads, the pros and the cons, and all that stuff, things that Nancy and I and the other certified financial planner professionals at CFGC day in and day out. So we're here to answer your questions. We are live as opposed to some other financial Shows that are not really call-in shows, they're one-hour infomercials. We're here to take your calls, and we're mm-hmm. here to help you. So if you have any questions, the good news is you don't even have to use your real name. Just pick up the phone and dial these numbers. 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. We're live today, April 6th. It's a nice day. 844-220-0965. Or you can text us to 21232. You know, that should be a segment Certified Financial Group Mythbusters. Uh, Anybody yeah. can call in oh, yeah. and say, my neighbor told me this, yeah, true they, or false. I, I like that. Okay. Simple as that. Like that. Good Thank idea, you. Kyle. We could, we, anybody I, I'm that, still in that idea. Y- y- like anybody that. that has ever had, well, you know what? I, I've been doing this because my neighbor told me 10 years ago what to do. 
you know, is this true or false? Right. 844-220-0965. You know, Kyle, there's a future for you in radio. <laughs> you know, I hope so. I want to tell you. I haven't been here this long for nothing. <laughs> needs to work on the voice a little bit. Yeah, text question <laughs> in at 21232. When I withdraw money from my IRA, do I pay 20% like I would withdrawing from your 403B? Good question. The simple answer is no. If if you're taking money directly from a, some type of corporate plan for a 401k, 403b, something like that, there is an automatic 20% withholding. If you're withdrawing from a standard IRA, a rollover IRA, whatever the traditional title may be, you can determine what the tax holding withholding is from zero up to whatever you wish. I've had some clients at 100% of the withhold of the withdrawal amount go towards taxes. So, no, is a simple answer. Got it? Got it. Yeah, the, a lot of folks think uh, they confuse that 401k, 403b, automatic 20% withholding. But mm -hmm. as Nancy said, if it's coming out of an IRA, you can elect how much, if any, taxes you want to have withheld. So that's the way we do that. And Kyle's got some... All right, well, here. we have our first caller here ready, Bob and Coco. Bob, go ahead. You're on the Certified Financial Group. Bob, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, I appreciate your show. I really do. Uh, I got I got a problem with an inherited IRA. Okay. I had a brother that left a pension, and I had to form an inherited IRA to receive it, according to our lawyer. Okay. So I did I did that. Okay, that's fine. My question is this: the will is is made out to my wife naturally. Should I pass away? How did she get any money out of that IRA? Or simple. simple. Okay. With, you just name her as a beneficiary. Yeah. With, with your inherited IRA, as any other qualified account, you name beneficiaries, and you name primary and contingent beneficiaries. Okay. So it, it's that simple. Okay. In other words, if I pass away, the will will take precedence no, in no, her. No, 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 no. Beneficiaries, stated beneficiaries, <laughs> take place uh, that take precedence over a will. You want as little as possible passing by the will because the will is public and the will subjects things to probate. So you need to name primary and contingent beneficiaries to your inherited IRA. Okay, what she do presented that certificate like usual, yes. and they enact the next of kin or whatever. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, yes. and don't forget okay. to take. I just heard you, I just heard you say something about um, how much should you take out in taxes when you? Okay. Um, we took out 10%, okay? Boy, we got slammed, mm -hmm. okay? We, we spent too much money, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a lot of charities, and it wasn't enough. Right. So now I jacked it up to 15 20% on the remainder. Okay. Um, and I, I don't have an accountant. That's where I made a boo-boo, so... Mm -hmm. I might be talking to you guys. I don't okay. know. Sure. You have any, what's your closest office to Coco, Coco Beach? Uh, Altamont our, Springs. Our office it's, in Altamont. It's Altamont, yeah, yeah, I know where that's at. It's yeah. World Headquarters. We have a lot of clients that come over from Coco, Bob, and we'd like to meet you as well. But Nancy said that what you want to do is set up your primary beneficiary as your spouse and then the contingent beneficiaries as whoever that might be. And upon your demise, that will avoid probate and go directly to your spouse, and then she will be able to continue the stretch. Now, don't forget, you have to take RMDs. Even yes, I do that, that already. Yeah. That's right. You said yeah, that. That's right. You did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So now, one help. more question. All right. Yes. Okay. I have some silver. I bought some silver to, to mm -hmm. hedge off this stuff mm -hmm. that's going on in the market. And uh, that would be no difference because it's still an IRA, okay? I made sure of that. Mm -hmm. So that would be the same beneficiary with the people that have the silver as well as uh, where the rest of it is, right? Well, yep. you can name whoever you want as beneficiaries, but yes, please just make sure that you have primary and contingent beneficiaries named on all of your hey, accounts. You guys have been a great help. I really appreciate hey, Bob, that sure. you do a lot of good net radio. I like to listen to this radio thank station. You, I really do. Well, thank you, Bob. Just a heads up uh, for yeah. other listeners uh, that get the inherited IRA. As we said earlier, what you don't want to do is commingle the IRAs. You have to keep that beneficiary IRA separate. So don't mix it with your current IRA. Okay, okay, I got that. I All got right, Bob. That. Thanks for the call. All right, Bob. Thanks uh, so much. If you want Bob's line, it's 844-220-0965. Let's go to Larry in Claremont. Larry, you're uh, up next with the Certified Financial Group. Hi, Larry. Hello, Larry. Hi, how you doing? Good. What can we do for you? Well, I got a call from an insurance company that was involved with my father's union. He passed away last year, and they had been trying to find me as a beneficiary of his insurance. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, I don't know how much it is. Uh, I had to I fill in a little paperwork verifying who I was, et cetera. And I sent that in, and they said that uh, the insurance policy originally was at like twenty five thousand dollars, but there's insurance and in, or interest involved in it. And I'm just wondering how do I handle that tax wise? That will be income to you. The, 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 okay. The, the, the death benefit is tax free. The earnings on that insurance will be taxable to you. Okay, just the earnings. Just not the, the earnings. No, not, the, not the death benefits are generally totally tax free, but the minimal amount of unless it's a huge policy, it's not going to be any big deal. Yeah, it was. It's not. It's like twenty five thousand dollars, and then whatever interest yeah. is tacked on. And they that. will send you a ten ninety nine. You just report that as regular income and pay the taxes on it. And you're on your way. Excellent. Okay. All right. Simple hey, enough. Uh, thank you guys very much. You're welcome. Appreciate Sorry your for work. your loss, and thanks for the call. All right. Thank you so much, Larry. If you want Larry's line, it's eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. Kim in the villages. Kim, go ahead. You're on the certified financial group. Morning, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, so my question is, when's the best time to take money out of a Roth IRA? Um, the advantage of the Roth IRA was the tax-free, right, you know, um, right. compounding. Uh, but if you take that out, you can't ever put it back in. Right. And right. And you lose that benefit. Right. So my question would be, you know, when do you need it? And that might be the best time to take it out. I mean, if you really don't have a need for the for what you have in the Roth, then you don't have to take a withdrawal. I mean, the one of the nice things about it is, you know, any money that's been on deposit five years or longer comes out tax free, as you said. But there's not any required minimum distributions on a standard Roth account. So if you don't need it, you may not necessarily need to take it. Yeah. So I may never take it. Okay. okay. Well, the, sure. but you know what? The nice thing is, Kim, it. <laughs> it's totally your choice. If you don't need it, yes. and yeah, you just want it. Financially, it's, it's, uh, if you don't, if you take money out of your IRA, you're going to pay taxes on exactly. it. Exactly. Correct. And you have to take, and you have to take, take your money. IRA. You're going to lose your benefit of, of right. tax. Exactly. 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 So, <laughs> so why not take advantage of that for as long as you yeah. can? That's the nice thing about it. There's no required minimum distributions on a, on a Roth IRA that you may have set up. Okay. All right. So the simple right. answer is you. when you need it. Right, right. So. And if you need it. And yep. if, when and if you need it. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right, Kim, thanks so much for the phone call. Uh, let's roll over to Paul. I'm sorry, Susan was up next. Susan in Orlando. Susan, you're on with a certified financial group. Hi, Susan. Good morning, Good Susan. Morning. Good morning. What's up? Hey, thank you for taking my call. Sure. So I have a tax question, not exactly related to what everybody else has been talking about. So here's what happened. I <laughs> It's a long story, but I worked for probably the biggest employer in our area, okay. entertainment-wise. Mm-hmm. And I donated to United Way through my paycheck deduction oh, about to United Way about a little more than $2,000. Now, I thought there would be some sort of tax benefit to that. When I went to have my taxes done last year, they said there was not. Okay. And I do not understand why. No clue why that would be. Well, with, with the tax law changes, the thresholds for what is deductible um, dollars that you donated uh, are a percentage of what your uh, adjusted gross income is. Those thresholds changed. Well, what's, what's happened is your itemized deductions, you have to have 12. Are you single? I am. Okay. So right now your itemized deductions, which include your charitable and your your medical expenses and your interest deductions for your home mortgage and property taxes, all that stuff, have to exceed twelve thousand dollars for you to get a deduction. So you get a you get a standard deduction. Everybody, individual, married, filing jointly, gets twenty four thousand dollars standard deduction. So if you're generally your itemized deductions, like your charitable, don't exceed that threshold, you get no benefit. Like other, uh, than, well, other, other than feeling you, good you about you get doing no the financial benefit. <laughs> yes, the altruistic <laughs> benefit is endless. Right. right. So we're sure yeah, that you gave I that understand. money out of the, out of, the, out of your good, goodness of your heart, but there are no... Well, additions. obviously. Yeah, but, but remember, you got a $12,000 <laughs> standard deduction, which you may not have qualified for anyway, so it should have reduced your taxes. Yeah, it did not have any effect on my... I, I get typically the same amount uh, every year back in, on my refund, uh-huh. and this absolutely had no impact on that. Uh, but, I bet okay. you, but I bet your paycheck was a little bit bigger all year long. Well, no, <laughs> it was two thousand dollars less. Oh, well, okay. maybe you were working less. Maybe that was the difference. But generally, the, yeah. the population in general probably saw an increase in their paycheck and probably saw somewhat of an increase in their refunds, depending on everybody's situation, especially in Florida. Yes. 
because yep. of the state tax. Yes. There's no state tax. No state tax. Yeah. yeah. If Perfect. you're so. listening in New York, you might have a different yes. story. You're, yeah, you have the salt yeah. limitations. Yeah. Got you. All okay, right, Susan. So. Go ahead, Annie. No, I was just going to say I hope that answers your question for you. Yeah. All right, Susan, thanks so much for the phone call. If you want eight, uh, Susan's line, 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. You know what? We'll squeeze in Paul real quick. Paul, go ahead. You're on with the Certified Financial Group. Morning, Paul. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, can a trust be a beneficiary to a uh, mutual fund? Yes. Yes. A, a, a trust can be a beneficiary to almost anything. I'm working with some clients right now who... Um, sadly, the mother passed away, and the trust is a beneficiary on her retirement accounts. Okay, so then when the trust gets the, after the deceased owner of the uh, account passes away. Well, let me, let me hold it. Hold it. Let's back up. I think your question is, can the mutual fund be the owner and not the beneficiary? You, see, I no. The, no, the no, I mean no, the, tru- the trust, the, tr- the trust, I, own, I mean. I own the mutual fund, Okay, mm-hmm. and there's a trust. Now, can the trust be a beneficiary of my brokerage account? Well, you, prob- you probably have the trust as the owner of your brokerage account. No, it's a retirement account. Is it a retirement account? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, right. so, so what you do is you set up the brokerage account in the name of the trust. And then whatever is in there when you pass on is going to go to your beneficiaries as outlined in the trust. That's the way you do it. Oh, okay, and then do they get the stepped-up basis? Yes. Yeah. They do. Yes. yes. Okay. It, it, it's just everything is dispersed according to the edicts of the trust. Okay, so I think what you said earlier was the trust can be a beneficiary to any type of account. Right, right. CD, but if it's non-retirement, as Joe just right. said, you want the trust to be the owner. Right, got that. Okay, okay you've answered it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Paul. All right. And we want to be right. careful, uh, p- folks, um, when they have living trusts and they haven't set it up with their attorney, they have done it on their self, by themselves, of naming your trust as a beneficiary of a retirement account. You have to be very careful there. The, the trust has to be written as a see-through trust, a look-through trust, as we call it. So you can maintain that stretch uh, opportunity. So be sure that if uh, you have your trust as the beneficiary of your IRA, that it's been set up appropriately to accommodate retirement accounts. That sounds like that was a very complicated. Well, that's it why is, you, and well, that's why you have to hire yeah. an yes. estate planning attorney. Right. So it, it's nothing you can do by yourself. It is you not no, definitely no, need. Well, you know, can. Should you? We don't particularly <laughs> right, right. think so. I could try to build my truck. Yeah. Yep. Take it apart and build it back together again. Should I do that? You'd no. probably be better at the taking it apart part. Yes. The taking it <laughs> apart, I mean, I could do that. But putting it back together, eh, not so much. All right, 844-220-0965. There's still some time left to get your question answered. So I'm going to give the phone number one more time, 844-220-0965. Or you can text us to 21232. Right now, we have to pause to get the three big things you need to know. No. No. Certified Financial Group right here on News 96.5 WDBO. It is your last chance to get your question answered at 844-220-0965 or your text at 21232. We are three minutes away from latest news, weather, and traffic. So let's get right back to your phone calls. Talk to Jamie in Orlando. Jamie, you're on the Certified Financial Group. Good morning. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Good morning, sir. What's up? Good morning. Yes, um, I actually uh, called in just to, I, I went with the federal government and I'm under the TSP plan and I uh, actually just have questions related to that. You know, you know, there's so many different rules to withdraw them and, you know, you have the age requirement and so forth. But I'd like to know if, um, is there a strategy to this whole thing when you get ready to withdraw? Do you guys have uh, that knowledge to guide me in the right way or give me some advice? Well, first thing is on a thrift savings plan, for our listeners that might not be familiar with that, it's like a 401k. Money comes out of your paycheck and you get a tax deferred. It's not taxable to you That's because without being taxed. You have a handful of options in there uh, to choose from depending on your age. It depends on how aggressive you want to be. But when it's ultimately time to retire, what we've done for many clients is roll that into an IRA and then work with them to provide them income throughout their retirement years. So the name of the game while you're working is to accumulate as much as you can, maximize, max that out. If you're under the age of 50, you could put 19 grand in there. Over the age of 50, you can put $25,000 in there. And that's what we'd recommend that you do. Uh, okay, so the answer to probably my question would be is that when you get ready to retire, is to roll over. Right. That is an option that you work with. Yes. Yes, yes. And oftentimes it's nice to set up your rollover IRA before you actually do retire. You know, if you're looking at a week or two or four um, so you have a place open and, and ready to accept your thrift savings plan when you do retire. 
We do that with sure. clients all the time. Well, that's, that kind of answers my question there, because I said there's, there's a reason knowledge out there, but sometimes you just don't know what source, you know, to kind of go out and ask these questions, because it's, it's, to me, it's a little confusing. I've sat down at some of these seminars, and there's, there's a lot of, you know, information being put out there, right. but it's, to me, it's information overload, right. and I don't know if other people in the room probably feel the same, because you know, everybody speaks and in different uh, methods about when it comes to financial. And I know it's all situational, but I just thought maybe I'd call and, you know, but then that's, that, that makes a little bit more sense. Good. Because I know that with the current program that it's in, uh, they just tell you, you can keep it in and you got that 70 rule and they don't pack it after 59 and I'm fine with that. But then they, when you withdraw it, they have like, it's, 20%. So many options. Yeah, is your automatic withholding. So, yeah. yeah. We're running out of show here. So, Jamie, thanks Sorry, so much Jamie. for the phone call. Give us call. a call. Schedule a complimentary consultation. The number to do that. 407-869-9800. One more time. 407-869-9800. All right. That's going to do it for this week's edition of On the Money with the Certified Financial Group. We have been planning tomorrow. Today. And we'll do it again next Saturday, 9 a.m. right here on News 96.5 WDBO. This is news news presented on this program is believed to be factual and up to date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but is limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Certified Advisory Corp. is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Information.